Steel and Vance Holiday Edition continues in Linda when we were trying to figure out who should be our first big guest when we were rolling in season two of Steel and Vance. Uh, you suggested our next replay. Love us some Biff Naked. Oh man. Not today, not There's no way that you can listen to that song without it gives head me, bobbing. It gives me goosebumps. Right? It should be the anthem that opens this show because it personifies right? what we hope to bring here on Steel Nets. You know who's coming up here. We love this woman. Biff Naked. And I tell you this, and I'm not kidding in any way. I first met her when I was at CKNW and she came in to do an interview. And I was nervous because she's a badass. I mean, she's a rock and roll star and she, you know, got the tats and, and she's famous. And I thought, oh, I'm a little bit nervous. She was the nicest person, the nicest celebrity. No, not even celebrity. The nicest person I think ever. I've ever interviewed in my life. Down to earth, sweet, lovely, gracious, Authentic. Thankful. Authentic. Authentic. And that, my experience, very similar to yours, breakfast television. Mm -hmm. Years and years ago, Biff came in one morning and I instantly had this love for her. Yeah. I felt safe with her. And we talked about really personal things. I know, right? And we're going to do that with her. Well, she's written a book. I she don't know has. if you've read it, but you should. It's called Ibificus. And this is one of the things that I talked about when we were doing the interview. Biff uh, talked about when she was going through breast cancer. Yeah. Um, her life has been so fascinating and her career is so varied and it is going and going and she's on a whole bunch of new projects. Should we get into Biff? Let's go. I'm Biff so Naked. I'm so excited. Biff Naked is get joining us from Toronto. You guys are so sweet. And I feel the same way about both of you. Um, my my admiration for both of you is just, it's absolutely unyielding. And um, and you're both gorgeous. I consider you both mentors and friends. And it makes me homesick. It makes me I'm homesick. Come home. To talk you promise to you. you're coming. You're coming here when you get back home. <laughs> right? Anytime. Open yeah. invitation. Seat at the table oh, at Steel and Vance, of course. Right. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. This is a big year for you, Biff, because this is the 25th anniversary of Ibificus. And I think, you know, to myself, 25 years ago, man, that seems like such a long time ago, so much water under the bridge. And then in other ways, it just seems like that. And when you think back, does it kind of shock you? They're like, oh my gosh, 25, a quarter of a century. It's, well, I mean, everyone, probably all of us as women, particularly, my, my only experience is as a woman. And, you know, 25 years for any woman, uh, we live lifetimes. We live oh, lifetimes yeah. in 25 years. That's two and a half decades. And um, I mean, you know, children are born and, and weaned and, and leaving the nest and, you know, um, marriages come and sometimes die. <laughs> and um, my career has really been always my rock. Um, it's always been what I enjoy the most. It's my passion and I just love it. And I find with every passing year, as I get older and in my 50s, um, I just like it more and more. I love it and enjoy it more and more. And that's the same with life. I need to ask you about when you're on stage, because I've seen you so many times. I've been in the mosh pit, down in front, and sweating and screaming up at you yes. and seeing you perform. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a real gift that you bring. And, and I want to know from your perspective, what is, that, what is it like to, to inspire and, and see that humanity come together, especially in such divisive times? Oh boy, I mean, yes, post, post uh, all the lockdowns and coming back into performing has been uh, an absolute dream come true. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed it before. I never took performing for granted ever. And every performance, I think the first 15 minutes is me uh, feeling like the same 18 year old kid trying to impress all the punk rock guys <laughs> that's so fear is there but then you know I wind up uh, talking with the audience I talk so much in between songs and I wind up connecting with people I always cry during Lucky sometimes during Spaceman yeah. and uh, and I look back at my drummer Chico and, I, and he's laughing because he knows that's not what I want to do and I'm just like <laughs> You know, I'm like, holy oh, shit. I always look at him and go, oh, and we laugh. Yeah. Um, and I just, I never get tired of it. I love it. I hope that I can perform until I'm 100. What is it that brings you to tears during those songs? 
Um, you know what is because I know that the song has some importance to a certain person or to people in the audience. I always dedicate "Lucky to Nurses," um, really? nice. and I always will. I think that um, nurses are, you know, the 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 unsung heroes uh, even before uh, yeah. the pandemic hit, and yeah. uh, and so cool. I always uh, dedicate the song, and I always get emotional about it because often there are um, families in the audience who have been through a complete upheaval and health crises and uh, certainly cancer patients and breast cancer patients like myself yeah. and so we have this unspoken bond that is very deep and very um very true and and really it's just a pure uh pure gratitude that comes through and i sing that song which is so funny to me because i wrote it with uh uh, my boyfriend at the time when I think it was like 92 or something and it was just like uh, you know a grungy a grungy love song that was oh. like this this love song that has really taken on a whole new meaning and endured and it, let's yeah. talk a little bit you brought up your your battle with breast cancer and 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 how honest and raw and open you were throughout all of that and 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 here you are at this point in your life just just for the viewer right now watching steel and vance who doesn't know that story give us a little uh, taste of the experience biff naked had and has now mm -hmm. on the other side gratefully well you know when i was diagnosed with breast cancer i was 36 years old there was no instagram uh there were barely blogs i don't even know if there was facebook yet uh, to be honest. And so there wasn't a lot of other, I guess, forums available except that BC Cancer, maybe there were some support group nights and stuff like that. So uh, there wasn't a lot of language surrounding cancer survival. There wasn't a lot of, um, it wasn't normal to talk about cancer. And that was something that was a journey I embarked on that I felt like, oh no, I have to talk about it um, uh, for other people because people keep asking me because I'm the singer. You know, and I just kind of looked at it like that. We're all sick and we're all bald. We all feel all these feelings together collectively and individually. And no one is asking their families about it, but people are asking me. So I'm gonna make sure that I always, you know, talk and try and advocate. And it was a great education into the healthcare system, uh, which led me down my path of volunteering. And, um, you know, I'm lucky that I survived and I, I wouldn't have survived without nurses and without um, the great care I got at BC Cancer. You know, Biff, one of the things that really struck me about you, uh, an interview that we did some years back, you were doing the welfare challenge, where I think you mm -hmm. had to live on $3 a day, and that's all you could have to buy food. You came into the studio and, you know, practically starving with uh, a couple of baggies of sliced up cucumbers, and you wanted mm -hmm. to share them with me. And I was like, no, 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 because that's all you're going to have to eat today. That's the mm -hmm. kind of giving person you are. And I'm curious to know, kind of expanding that to the need that we're seeing on the street and the homelessness, the Addiction, opioid crisis. crisis. Yep. Um, how, do you, how are you feeling about that? And why did that touch you to the point where you felt you didn't have to do that, but you wanted to take part? Oh, yeah. And I think even today it's more important now and it's more relevant now. And unfortunately, organizations like Raise the Rates that was doing it at the time in, in Vancouver, um, they, you know, it's hard for them to, to, to stay motivated and focused because it just seems like the, the greater society really doesn't care half the time. And if anyone goes to Vancouver, you know, I've been all over the world and all over the country, there's nowhere else in the country that's like the downtown east side. Nowhere. Yeah. No. Um, and it's just because it's concentrated, it's very concentrated, dense population that is a very specific uh, population. Um, you know, I think in other cities, it's a little more spread out. But, you know, with COVID, all that the pandemic really did was exacerbate the problems that already existed. How much do we love our Biff Naked? And she's a hard act to follow. I mean, all of these replays have been a hard act to follow, but our next guest is a fresh guest, and oh, is he a fabulista. Oh, indeed. Randall McDonald, friend of mine, host of a TV show, etiquette expert. You can't miss this. He's the human tornado. Coming up next.